us think that they are not all around us now. Of course they are. And he wrote again in 2 Timothy chapter 3, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, and he describes those times in great detail, but says this in verse 5, Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. A form of godliness, we would say today, having religion. We might even say today, being Christian, calling itself Christian. A form of godliness, a form of Christianity, but denying the power. When you deny the person and work of Christ, you've taken the power out of the Christian faith. You have to substitute other things that you call the power of God, but they are paltry counterfeits, and that's why there are so many things. I won't even begin to try to describe them all, but all the things that people look to. This is evidence of God's presence. This is evidence of God's blessing. Look at this. Look at that. See this. See that. But no power of the Spirit of God. Yes, John's warning was not only for his day, but it's also for our day. Don't be deceived. Don't be pulled away. There's so many things I could talk about, but let me mention one. I think a lot of God's people get deceived by the concept of cultural relevance. The church has got to be more culturally relevant. We're just not reaching today's culture. We've got to become more culturally relevant. Well, I think we should be very much aware of what's going on in the culture around us, and we don't stick our heads in the sand and ignore it altogether. But be careful. Again, observation has shown us that many a church and many a Christian has been seduced into a version of Christianity that is a weak and paltry version on the premise that they are being more culturally relevant. What we're told is we can be more culturally relevant and not change anything about the gospel, but if you examine very carefully what usually happens, what usually happens is that the gospel does get compromised. And these are just baby steps. The deceivers don't necessarily drag you from point A to point B all in one fell swoop, all the way from orthodoxy to apostasy and heresy in one fell swoop. It usually goes in little steps, little steps, little steps, little steps. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Because we have an ever-present danger to avoid. Just when we think we've got it figured out over here, we understand it, we've got our def defenses up, the devil has already attacked us from the other side, and we've got something brand new to deal with. And we better always be on guard. An ever-present danger to avoid.